Let's now consider the situation on EMG with neurogenic changes. If we were to take a very simple case of someone who unfortunately had an accident and the nerve going to the APB muscle was cut. What would happen in this scenario is over the subsequent couple of weeks the fibres of the median nerve as they come down would totally degenerate. The muscle in due course will start upregulating receptors on its surface um, and this will be looking for nerve fibres to come and innovate it. When we put the EMG needle in we will be able to detect fibrillations so these are these small little spiky things that come up spontaneously very narrow um, on our oscilloscope and because nerves have to regrow um, and regrow usually along their former channel um, if there is no nerve fibre at all to scaffold the regenerating nerve across back to that muscle unfortunately in these situations the nerve may not make its way back to the muscle and the nerve will remain denervated so when we stick the EMG needle in um, even within the first three weeks what we're going to find is a, a lack of activity because the brain can't send the signals to the APB muscle the signal stops where it's being transected and so no motor unit action potentials will be present um, on the oscilloscope. Three weeks down the line we'll be able to see this upregulating process and these fibrillations will occur and that's what we'll be able to detect. We won't see any voluntary motor activity and we may need to follow up these patients further down the line to see if there's any possible nerve regeneration uh, back down the arm. Let's take a slightly different example now um, where somebody has got some inflammation to some of the nerve fibres for example um, and this is causing some axonal damage to some of the nerve fibres but not others. So if we look at this a little bit more microscopically, if we've got a couple of nerve fibres coming down here like so, and they'll send off their little terminal branches to a number of muscle fibres like this. If some of the nerve fibres over here are knocked out, then the muscle fibres here, downstream, innervated previously by those, will start upregulating to attract in um, some new nerve fibres. Now those new nerve fibres may have to come in from a slightly healthier nerve up here, but it's quicker and this for some of these nerve fibres here to start growing and innovating these muscle fibres over here like so. And this is called terminal sprouting. So this process occurs much quicker than the process over here. What we'll see on the EMG in this scenario is of course for the first couple of weeks of this process we'll just have a complete lack of these muscle fibres contributing to the interference pattern and so the interference pattern will be reduced but in due course as these axons sprouts come up and innovate these muscle fibres if we look at our oscilloscope and we have our motor unit action potential here that's what it would normally look like what we'll start to find is the presence of little satellites, like so. And that's the muscle fibres here beginning to become innervated by these little sprouts. And so we'll pick them up over here. These will be unstable to begin with, and that's to do with the nascent neuromuscular junctions over here, and so you can see them jittering away. And with time, and as these nerve axons start to become more established, these terminal sprouts start moving inwards and contributing to the motor unit 
potential like so. Because there's extra fibers generating current, the amplitude will increase in size and they become a little bit polyphasic at top because it's taking a little bit of extra time for these motor fibers to join in to this motor unit action potential. Once this has become firmly established, then one gets a very large, wide motor unit like so, as these all become part of the same motor unit here. The other thing to say is that when the fibres are recruiting, we're going to be getting these large units which are taking a little bit more time to come in. It's not the same pattern of little individual muscle fibres being recruited from lots of different motor units. It's just sort of a couple of motor units generating all the force. So we're going to see these large units which are recruiting fairly late um, and they may have some polyphasia here depending on what phase of regeneration is occurring. The fibrillations uh, also uh, decrease uh, during this period of regeneration and usually by about one or two years um, after such an axonal event has occurred we won't see any and we'll just see these very large chronic units. I'm now going to show you some neurogenic changes in a muscle, the tibialis anterior muscle. It'll first start off with some fibrillations and then we're going to see the neurogenic units. So these little tapping, popping sounds, these are all fibrillations over here. Then these polyphasic units lock on to here. See lots of different shapes to them. And this is a fairly recently denovated motor unit which is now trying to heal itself by regenerating and developing axonal sprouting and so we're getting these configurations of multiple muscle fibers being innovated um, by their adjacent healthier ones and trying to regenerate the muscle that way.